Hello friends and greetings for today. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample questions discussion. We are in chapter four talking about certain sample questions from the test techniques and we have covered few of the questions from this chapter from a theoretical context. Now it's time we should look at some calculation based context like equivalence partition and other options. So let's have a look on these questions for today and try to understand how to tackle such questions and what could be the tips, tricks, which you can certainly get involved with in order to be appropriate and 100% correct. So the next question here is question number 25. And this question is from equivalence partition. But again, uh, if you want more detail with more details on the concept, go through the tutorials first and then come back to this question. An employee's bonus is to be calculated. It cannot be negative, but it can be calculated down to zero. The bonus is based on the length of the employment and the various categories are less than or equal to two years, more than two years, but less than five years, five to 10 years inclusively, and uh, longer than 10 years. Now this is where we really want to understand that how exactly the values will be calculated. Remember team, from your learning and understanding that the values and the operators in between that are very, very important to answer it right. In case you go wrong with creating your data table, which is like con consisting of the various ranges, you will turn out to be wrong in fact. Now here, the question says, what is the minimum number of test cases required to cover all valid equivalence partition? Now this is the catch here that sometimes they say all equivalence partition, which may include valid or invalid, or they just say all valid equivalence partition or all invalid partitions, right? You need to be very careful with this valid, invalid, or without valid, invalid, because it does certainly add more value to it. But here, if you look at the scenario, it also says that you don't have to consider a negative scenario. That means negative values of the experience because experience cannot be negative and they have specified that to you as a part of the scenario. So it cannot be negative, but can be calculated down to zero. That means a fresher who joins. So put your scenarios into real time in order to get that clarity that whether something feasible is possible or not. If you get that clarity, you become more confident with what you are trying to solve. So let's have a look on what could be our equivalence partition table. And here it is. So this is how your table will be looking like, where you have less than or equal to two years. Then the second range will be 2.1. Again, we don't really have to worry about decimals or whole numbers. Just to tell you that it is greater than two, I'm putting 2.1. In the values certainly don't have to be like decimal points until unless they are targeting it. I can write it as 3 to 4.9 or less than 5. So mathematically, you know how to present it, but just to make it clear, I'm putting it in decimal. So 2.1 to 4.9, 4.9, because it says less than 5 years. See team, this is the difference. If they say less than 5 years, less than or equal to 5 years, the boundary changes right? So this is where you need to be careful with the operators. The third range is five to 10 years inclusively. That means five and 10 both fall under the third range and 10.1 or greater, which is longer than 10 years. So all the four are valid. It, it's just that people are based, uh, paid bonuses based on their length of employment. So the amount will be varying like Less than two years may have a thousand dollar or something. Two point one to four point nine may have three thousand or something. So just the amount will vary, but everyone will get the bonus. So all the classes are valid in this case. Anything which could be invalid is of course less than zero, which is not in our scenario. So you don't have to cover anyways when they are asking you the question. So keeping it very straightforward, we got four options here: three, five, two, four, and the right answer is D four because we will have four tests derived from this particular scenario to cover all the valid equivalence partitions, right? Let's look at the next one here. Question number 26, which is again on the similar thing, but we are talking about multiple things put together. So question number 26 says, a speed control and reporting system has the following characteristics. If you drive 50 kilometer per hour or less, nothing will happen. 
If you drive faster than 50 km per hour, but no more than 55, you will be warned. If you drive faster than 55 km per hour, but not more than 60 km per hour, you will be fined. And if you drive faster than 60 km per hour, your driving license will be suspended. The speed in km per hour is available to the system as an integer value, which would be the most likely set of values in km per hour identified by applying the boundary value analysis, where only the values on the boundaries of the equivalence classes are selected. Now you would see here, first of all, you just have to apply the same context which you learned in boundary value analysis, that is to derive the ranges from the given scenario. And first of all, that's where you need to be appropriate and correct. If your table is correct, your answer will be right. If your table is wrong, your answer will be wrong as well. So let's use the table here and see what table we have got. So the table is here. We got less than or equal to 50. Then the second range is more faster than 50. That is 51 to 55 because it says no more than 55, which means up to 55, right? So second range is 51 to 55. Then again, 56 to 60, similar way. And then the fourth condition says if you drive faster than 60, that is 61 or greater, right? So these are the four ranges what we have got. And now it's time for us to understand that what are the boundary values. So all you have to do is stick to the wall, one inside, one outside, one inside, one outside. So the values here, as per the diagram, which we have understood in the tutorial is uh, 50, 51, 55, 56, 60, 61. Six values is what we need. And that would be your right answer. So the right answer here is D, 50, 51, 55, 56, 60, 61, as per the boundary value analysis. But there's a trick here. If you observe, equivalence classes are just a diversion. If you see the question, it says values on the boundaries of equivalence classes. So of course, there are equivalence classes on which you test on the boundaries. So nothing to think about equivalence partition here. You just concentrate on the subject that is boundary value analysis and you will have your right answer there. So keeping it short and simple, we just discussed two questions as a part of this tutorial. We'll continue ahead with the next tutorial with more questions from this chapter again. And we'll, we want to talk in detail for everything. So that's where we're just taking few questions in each tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.